Hello everyone, this is your boy Avkash and today we are going to learn another Python concept which will transition you from a Python developer to an expert Python developer. So Fast API helps you to set up ASGI or Asynchronous Server Interface Gateway where you could connect your Python Fast API based backend to any front end, whether it's React, Angular, React, Next.js, or whatever front end you have in much more simpler and much more effective way. So when you are handling a post request with your Fast API backend, you can just write a very simple post request handler and you could do that. Or you could write a class which is going to handle all of your post query parameters. Writing a class will help you to manage the parameter, write the validation logic, as well as you could also write the parameter handler correctly. So in this tutorial, we are going to cover few things such as first, how to write the class based post request query handler. Then we will learn how to pass the incoming query parameters for their validity and correctness. And finally, how to process those parameters depending on whatever your business logic is and generate the JSON response and send that back to requester or the front end column. My objective from this tutorial is to transition you from writing a basic Python code to an export level Python code. So let's get ourselves started. In our next step, we are going to add a post API in our fast API code. So let's create a folder called API. And inside the API folder, we are going to create our post API handler. So let me create a file called post API handler.py and in this code we are going to create a class and in this class we are going to set up the structure for our query with regard to post so let me create the post model query so i will just call it post api query and this query is going to have these parameters filter name is the query we are expecting coming out from request. So filter name is one query when we can also say filter value. So these are the two query is coming. They both are and we can also add one records limit and that we can use the integer query. So these are the three different variable we are going to expect from our post API to send it to us. And now we need to set this class which is going to have a base model. So remember with fast API, we always use the pydentic. So from pydentic import base model. And this base model is going to be define our class type for the post API query. And here we can write our method so the method will be define get query response and query will be passed here query dictionary which will be now we need to take this query and convert it to JSON enable so let's try to have the JSON enable from fast api encoder so we can say from fast api dot encoders let's import json able encoder or json able encoder and that is what is going to take this query and convert into a json format and 
Now, once we got query which is coming out from our post request, we need to process it. So we could handle here. So we can write the handler. So define the query request handler. And this handler is going to get the query dictionary. And I will just return it true for a while. And this query request handler is what is going to be used here. So we could say return query request handler and it is going to take this query dictionary. And for now, that should be enough. So here I can just create a very simple post request. So I can say very simple code, which is going to be handle request from post. So this is what we are expecting. So now we can come back to our app.py. We can import, you can say API handlers, and we can say from API dot post API handler. So this is, so either we could take this handler call and we can say get response, but rather than we can say from API import and this. So that will be easier for us. Now we can implement the post here. So here will be our post handler. So we can call app dot post. That will be our post. And then whatever we want to define. So we can say get query data. And here we can define the tags. So these tags are going to be used by our swagger tag. So I will be coming here. So can say post API section after we have defined our tags because you can have multiple tags is better that you can put these tags into an array. Finally, we could say what kind of our response class will be and the response class we could say because remember our post response is sending JSON. So we have to tell that our response class is going to be JSON response. So we have to get our responses json response added here and this json response is going to be used here so we have defined our app post now we need to define our function definition so it will be async this is an async call define get query data so this is like a get query data function so that's what is going to be shown by the swagger and we need to make sure that that's a query. So the query is going to be whatever the query we are defining here. So this is our post API query. So we could say that this query is actually the query type of post API handler. So post API handler and then post API query. So this will be query type. Return post API handler. One second, let me put colon here dot so we need to make sure that this is what get query response because the handler is inside. So we need to make sure that we are calling the get query response, get query response. And remember, this is the query is going to be passed as a parameter. Let me clean it up. There you go. So get query data has been added as a post. And if we come here, our code is still running because the debugger is set, we can call Docs. So that shows us that where is our post or get or all the APIs. So here is our post API. Here is our try it out. And you see here that the post API is expecting. So because it's a query and it's a post API query type, the system automatically knows that we need to have the filter name, filter value, and record its limit. And they all are st string, string integer, string, string integer. So everything is set as we are expecting here. Now we can actually test this code. If we want to test this code, we can come here and we can set up a breakpoint here. And let's see how far we could go. So our filter, let's execute it. Request actually came. And if you look into the query, it's a filter name is a string, a string, record limit. Everything is okay. Let's go here. Now the re response coming here exit run it completely and if you look into the data that was the request and here is the response body and here post result is true and post message is got it so that is what you are getting here 
So our implementation is correct. Now, if you would want to just pass and say, hey, what was the filter name and what uh, we really had, we could check it. So I can just spend five more minutes and implement here parser, query parser, and a response depending on our query. So if you look into query, so it is a query dictionary is the parameter which is coming inside and we can say the result is a JSON result and this query is a request coming out. So we have already seen our query request is in this format and JSON result. So let's try to build it. So we could say that we have filter name. These are our records. So that is our result JSON. Let me create some data here. So these are the sample data we have. So after we have defined our data, now we can check whatever the parameters going to become. So remember our request is going to come as a JSON. So we need to loop through and see whatever is available. So we could use actually for key and value in query dictionary dot items and we can say if key so we are expecting our key so key should be the filter name so if it is a filter names so fil the filter name if key is filter name it means okay then value must be either first name or last name if key is filter name and we can also say if value in and then we need to make sure that our, our value must be either first name or the last name because these two filters only we have if okay it means everything is right here and we can assign the filter name is going to be the value else if key is equal to filter value if key is filter value then we know that the filter value is going to be is the value else elif we could say key is equal to records limit then we already know that limit records value is going to be the value so now based on this filter we can get all three things set for us after values are set for filter name and filter value so we could say if none not in and then we have to make sure that our filter name and filter value they both are not none so filter name comma filter value so they are not in none now we have to get the result so we could say just make a very simple results equals to and we will say for item in sample data so item for item in sample data that's going to get our all the items from sample data then we have to make the conditions if the item now we have to make sure that what is the key we are trying to search here so we need to say if the item and the key and the key will be the filter name so either first name or last name and then the what's the value we are searching for the value so filter value we are searching here and that is what going to give us the results is basically is called result json there you go so whether it's either it could be empty or it will have the value here limit records i will implement little later so let me put a breakpoint here so let's search here so we are searching for first name and in the first name we are expecting condition first so james and execute it so we got request here filter name became the first name value became the james record we have already said that now let's see what is the result json and it's a james did find so based on james the value is going to be coming here and your result is first name james if you would want to change this to something simple so for example if i just search for first name e just use e one option we could use here is that find option and we can say can we find the filter value if greater than or equal to zero so that's our condition run it again as you could see we found james 
we found Amish and we found Chang because the E was found in all those results. And here your results are. So here we could check if the length of result JSON is greater than the limit records, then we have to limit it. So if this is greater than limit records, we could actually take this result JSON, result JSON equals to result JSON of limit records. Let's see if there is an issue. So result JSON, what is the limit records? Is zero. And we can also say that limit record is not is greater than zero and so that way this must be greater than zero only then we really need to go so if greater than zero and the length the records are more than limit record only then we need to filter them out two records now we are expecting length will be the three records are two this is going to filter the records now the value became two and it will select only first two records and that result going to be available here so now all of these three conditions what we would want it in our post is working and if you would want to fix this thing you can actually just go here and say simplify chain comparisons it's just gonna say there you go and i think pretty much that's all you really needed in order to get the post request working with your code. If you would want to make this curl call, you can actually take this whole curl call from here and open the terminal. Let's run this thing and response came back. Our objective was to create a post request and set it up in our fast API code and which we have achieved in this example. word in this tutorial and the previous tutorial is all available in this python project repo folder name fast api quick start here in this fast api test project you can find the full code which has implementation for the get and post handler as we have understood in this tutorial